What we're going to be looking at here is we're going to retire a portion of the bonds that we have outstanding using the effective interest method. First we're going to look at how we'd amortize any interest expense and any amortized premium or it could be discount on the portion of bonds that we're retiring here. And then secondly we're going to look at any gain on redemption here, the reacquisition price, and also any accrued interest on these bonds. And for example here, Corporation A issued $900,000 worth of bonds here at 106 or 100 six percent apart at a 12 percent stated interest rate here uh, per year a yearly interest rate of 12 percent and they're going to be for four-year bonds here and they were issued here on 7120 x1 and the bonds pay semi-annually here on 1 1 and 7 1 each year here and the bonds were issued to yield 11 percent that is because of the they're going to be issued at a premium here and because of that they're going to have to be their yield rate here is 11 percent and on 10 1 20 x2 bonds of a par value here of $360,000 are called at 102 or 102 percent a par plus any accrued interest and they're going to be retired here. So what we're going to do is of the $900,000 that were initially issued here $360,000 worth here are going to be retired here and they were initially issued here on 7120x1 and the $360,000 are going to be retired here on 10120x2. And this is where we're going to use the effective interest method here for the amortization of any, in this case it's going to be a bond premium or it could be for a don, bond discount as well. So to determine, in this case we're going to, they're going to be issued at a premium here. So we have $900,000 issued at 106%, so they would, they are issue here would be for 954000 That's the cash we'd receive, but their face value here is 900000 versus the 954000 we're receiving, so the difference gives us a $54,000 premium. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at this amortization here and how we uh, determine the amount of interest expense here and the premium amortization for that portion of bonds that we're going to retire here. So let's go look at it here. This is We're going to be using the effective interest method here. So we are going to retire $360,000 worth of those $900,000 that were issued and we're going to have to determine the interest and the premium that are be assigned for amortizing that the amount that we're retiring. And now remember the annual interest rate here is 12% and its stated yield rate here is 11%. So our, looking at it on a semi-annual basis here we are going to pay a six percent semi-annual interest payment here and we're going to we're going to look at we'll look at the dates here so but the semi-annual interest payment is going to be fifty four thousand dollars so based on the twelve percent uh, annual rate and six percent per period here and then our effective interest rate well it's going to be half of that eleven percent for five and a half percent so what we have to do is we're going to amortize here uh, 900 we start out with our carrying amount here of 954,000 and then we're going to amortize it down here to nine hundred thousand dollars so what I'm showing here is this the uh, date here at a retirement the portion of interest expense here and premium amortization that we're going to have to assign here to the portion of bonds that are being retired. So just going, just so you understand how this effective interest works here. So we started out with our carrying value here, 954,000. Then we take uh, times our effective interest rate here, five and a half percent. Semi-annually here for the period, we're going to have an interest expense here, $52,470. The cash payment here was for 54,000. So the premium amortization here would be $1,530. So taking that from the beginning carrying balance here of 954,000 we come up with our new carrying amount here of $952,470. Okay so now what we want to really do is we've let's just say we've determined the inter the effective interest expense here for um, both for the periods here. Let's just look at it here. So on 7-1-X-1 we issued these bonds here at $954,000. Now our first payment here would have been 1-1-X-2 for $54,000 and we calculated our interest expense here and also the premium amortization and then also for the next period here 7-1-X-2 we would have had the, again our cash payment here and then interest expense and our premium. Okay so we've got that. Now comes along the uh, retirement date here on 10-1-X-2. So that would have come in here. It's going to 
come between this premium that we have to amortize here or this cash payment that we have the next period here of 54000 and then we've got the actual interest expense here. So that would have been set between 71X2 and 11X3. And that was that retirement date here of 10-1-X-2. So that's what we're going to be looking at. This next payment date here on 1-1-X-3, that's the amount of the interest expense here and amortization that we have to divide up here for the amount of bonds that we're retiring. So remember, our, we're retiring them here. Well, at 7-1, that would, okay, 7-1 between 10-1 here, we've got three months here. So we got three months of the six months. So that's going to amount of portion of this uh, interest expense that we have to allocate. We got three months of the six months. So that falls right in between this uh, payment date here that we have to look at. And then the other thing we have to look at is the amount of bonds that we're retiring. So we're retiring 360000 of the 900000 outstanding. So that represents four tenths here or 40%. Okay, so now let's go look at this interest expense, and that's the amount that we've got to allocate here. So uh, for the amount that's being retired here, so we take the fifty-two thousand two ninety-seven that we would have calculated here. That was based on the effective interest rate of five point five percent here times 0.4. That's the amount of bonds that we're retiring here, 0.4 or 40 percent here, times that period that we're at, or we're looking at it, that three-month period here, three six of this three months of the six months here so we've got uh, the total interest expense here of 52,297 times the portion of bonds that we're retiring here four tenths times the number of months here three of the six months for that uh, that payment date or this uh, interest date here that we m m calculated here and that's going to equal uh, $10,459. So of the $52,297 of the total $900,000 or that is outstanding or the $954,000 that we're uh, amortizing or for the period here, $10,459 is going against the amount of that $360,000 that were retired. And then for our premium, same thing here. That was that premium amount that we're amortizing here. For the period, we had 1,703, again, times 4 tenths. That's the percentage of bonds that were retiring. And then for that three month, three, uh, three of those six months here, that gives us the premium allocated here at $340. Again, for the amount that's being retired. Now comes the other thing we have to do, the unamortized premium here. So remember, let's just look at it. This is we have to look at this carefully here. So we got four tenths or 40% of the bonds retired here times, okay, we got a total amount of premium here of $54,000. That was a $954,000 down to nine hundred here. Then we've also amortized so far $1,530 worth. So we would subtract that out here from our total amount. And then we amortize the $614 here. We would have subtract, we subtract that out here. Okay, so that all four tenths or 40% of that here is going to the retired amount. And then we also have used up this $340 worth that we allocated on the premium here for the amount of bonds that we're retiring. So take that amount here minus, take a, our four tenths, a four tenths time this quantity amount minus the 340. So the unamortized premium here is $20,000. Now that's what's sitting here for those bonds, the 360,000 that were retired here on 10-1. And that's what's remained on them. So that has to be taken out here. And then one other thing, our accrued interest uh, on some cash payment that we're going to have to pay. That was again, 360,000 times the 12% interest rate. And then that semi-annually here for six twelfths of a year here. And then we also have that three month period, three months of the six months here that, that retire, essentially that retirement date. So that quantity here, gives us a crude interest payment here of $10,800. Okay, just this is, if we take anything away from this, it's how you allocate your interest expense here and your, in this case, your premium amortization here for the amount of bonds that we're retiring here. So remember, we're retiring 40% of the bonds, that would be factors in here, and then we're retiring them here between 7-1-X-2 and 1-1-X-3, and uh, that is three months here, 10 one X2 would be three months. So three of the six months get used here in our formula. Okay, so now let's go down and let's go over here. 
And we're going to be looking at how we calculate any gain or loss on this bond retirement. So number one, we start with our reacquisition price, plus we have to pay the accrued interest. Reacquisition price, uh, well, we have 360000 retired at 102%. That's what we're require at retiring at here, or 102. So that gives us $367,200. That's what we have to pay to retire those that $360,000 power amount, plus we have to pay accrued interest. And we calculate calculated that before. 360 times the 12% stated rate for uh, semi-annually here, 6 twelfths a year, and then for that three months of the six months that we're talking about. That equals 10800 So the total reacquisition price plus accrued interest here is $378,000. Now we've got this unamortized premium here. Okay, we went through that already. We calculated that. That was that uh, first period here of 1540 the second period here of 1614 here and then we had the $340 here for the three uh, for the third period here that we we're talking about for the 360,000 that were amortized so our um, amortized premium here is $20,000 and then we had our accrued interest here that we calculated up above here $10,800 so now let's look at um, in this case, how we calculate a gain on redemption. So we take our reacquisition price plus accrued interest here of $378,000, less the net carrying amount of the bonds. The par value, we're retiring $360,000, the, less the unamortized premium here of $20,000. So we got a total amount here of a carrying value of $380,000. Take that, and then we have also our accrued interest here that we have that we have to subtract out. So take, netting that amount here against the reacquisition price here that we're paying, that gives us a gain on a redemption here of $12,800. And what we're just saying here, we paid less, we paid $378,000 to retire these bonds here, then the carrying value plus the accrued interest. Carrying value plus the accrued interest here is $390,000. $800. So there's our gain here on the redemption. We paid less here than the carrying value. Okay, now let's go over and let's look at how we'd enter this here on our balance sheet. And all we're really going to be looking at, we're not going to get into any great detail here, but we're just going to be looking at um, this 10-1-X-2 retirement date. So just looking at our, starting out our accounts, remember those were the bonds issued here in 7-1-X-1. I'm not showing all the entries. All I'm doing is showing on 10-1-X-2 so you get an idea of what's going on here. So we would have credited or reduced our cash here. Well, let's move over to our bonds payable first here. And again, we would have credited our bonds payable for that uh, that amount here, total amount issued at the face value $900,000 worth, and then come the 10-1-X-2, we would have debited or reduced our bonds payable by the amount we're retiring here at $360,000. And then we also have a premium account associated to that. So let's just look at that while we're down here. So in 7-1-X-1, we would have set that up here for $54,000 premium, and then we would have had some interest or reduction in our premium for those first two p periods here. But for this third period we're talking about on 10-1-X-2, we had that $340. That was the premium allocated to the portion of bonds that were retired in here. That's 1703 times four-tenths of bonds for those three months here. That's $340 here. So we debit or reduce our premium amount for those bonds retired. And then the unamortized premium here. Remember, we calculated that to be $20,000. So we'd also reduce our premium uh, account by that amount that we retired here. So we've taken care of bonds payable and our premium here. Then let's just go up and look at our cash account here. And I have to note, if you can't add up all your debits and credits here, they're going to balance out. Okay, so again on 10-1-X-2 here, we had um, 367200 reduce our cash account. That was then a 360 times the 102% their call value here. And then on 10-1-X-2, we also had that interest payment here of 10,000, accrued interest here of 10800 that we have to pay on it. So we'd reduce our cash by that amount here. Okay, so we've taken care of our bond payable, our premium here, our cash account, then we just have that interest expense here and some gain on redemption. So our interest expense on our income statement here, uh, for the first two periods we're showing a, what we had actually on our actual yield based on our 11% yield here, 52470 and then the next amount here. But this was uh, for the retirement here in 10-1-X-2, those 360000 Remember we calculated that here to be the, the next uh, monthly amount here, or 
period amount here of 52,297 times the four tenths of the bonds that were retiring are 40 percent here and then three months into the six month period here on 10-1 and remember the payment was from 7-1 here um, through the 1-1 one, one of the next year so on 10-1 we had three months of the six months here that gave us $10,459 worth of interest expense here on the bonds that were retiring and then and the one last thing here on our, our gain on our redemption, remember we calculated that here on $12,800. So we credit our gain on redemption here of $12,800. So the only thing we really want to take away here is remember um, on when we retire these bonds, you have to figure out the, uh, the portion that you're retiring, the allocate the interest expense here, and then you also have to al allocate moving over here on our balance sheet. In this case, we had a premium. You have to allocate the a portion here to the premium or reduction of the premium you're allocating for that particular period here. And then we have to also take care of the unamortized premium and remove that off the books here uh, for whatever remaining on that the portion of bonds that we're retiring here and then also remember the bonds payable we reduce that here by the portion that we're retiring and then remember on our cash payments here we have to pay out or reduce our cash account for the amount based on the call value here the bond portion we're retiring and also the uh, accrued interest expense that in this case had to be paid on those bonds that were retiring okay so that takes care of um, uh, bonds retired here where we have to use the effective interest rate method here we, where we have to allocate the percentage of uh, interest expense and in this case the premium amortization based on the percentage of bonds that we were retiring.